thank you for joining me today on Types and Shadows. And just to give you an idea of what this uh, video series is about, uh, Types and Shadows, we're going to be looking at different types and shadows of Jesus all throughout the Bible, as well as types and shadows of what we now have as New Testament believers. And so today I'm going to actually be sharing with you the parable of the unforgiving servant. And we can find that account in Matthew chapter 18. And I'm actually going to start reading in verse 21. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, it says, Then Peter came to him, him being Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and that all that he had with, but as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt." Now, we're going to go ahead and stop there right now in verse 27. And so, how is this a type and shadow of Jesus and a type and shadow of what we have today? Well, Jesus is the one that's actually sharing this parable. But let's just look at that first part first. It says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And he said, Up to seven times. Now, when Peter said up to seven times, in his mind, he thought, Hey, I'm being extremely generous. I'm saying, you know, and Peter, and this is talking about in one day. And so Peter says, okay, so if I forgive somebody up to seven times in one day, surely, you know, that's enough, master. I'm being extremely generous. But then Jesus turns around and says, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And so now, of course, Peter's like, oh my goodness, who can do that? And that's exactly the point. The point Jesus was making here is that we need to walk in forgiveness. Forgiveness needs to be a way of life for us. You know, we should not put a limit on our forgiveness. Now, that doesn't mean that you just walk around and you just let people treat you badly. I mean, if you are in a situation and someone's, you know, treating you badly or doing you wrong, you can distance yourself from that person. You know, just because I forgive you doesn't mean I still have to fellowship with you. Sometimes when we forgive a person, the best thing we can do is to distance ourselves from that individual because we at this because to distance ourselves from that individual because we want to protect ourselves as well we want to guard our heart as well the word also tells us to guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life and so even though i am supposed to continually forgive and and operate in forgiveness as a way of life that doesn't mean that i have to be your doormat okay and if you don't want to respect me then that's your choice but it's also my choice to now distance myself from you because i have to guard my heart i have to protect myself as well so understand when we're taught when i talk about forgiveness when the bible talks about forgiveness when anyone is telling you about forgiveness if they're telling it to you the correct way they're not saying just walk around and be a doormat and let people treat you any kind of way no that's not it at all guard your heart protect yourself so maybe you need to you know distance yourself from that person remove yourself from that situation whatever is going on but what what we're talking about here what's being talked about here is just the fact that forgiveness needs to be a way of life for us we need to be open to constantly forgive amen and this is a type and a shadow of what we now have in our new covenant because when jesus died on the cross all of our sins past present and future were all forgiven and so now we're able to come boldly to God's throne of grace because we have forgiveness. God constantly forgives us. He is continually forgiving us each and every day. I mean, and now that doesn't mean that we're out practicing sin. Sin of omission is a sin. You know, I mean, we can have bad thoughts. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, iniquity. You know, that can be a sin. I mean, that doesn't, to say that we sin 
daily to say that we sin and we fall short of the glory of God. That doesn't mean that we're just out, you know, just living however we want to live, just doing whatever we want to do. But in life in general, I mean, we are imperfect and we do sin every day, you know, whether we're trying to sin or not trying to sin. Bad thoughts will come into our mind when we know to do good and we don't do it. That can be considered a sin. I mean, things just happen. You know, life happens and God is constantly forgiving us. He has made his forgiveness available to us and it's there for us to receive anytime we want it, anytime we need it. And so this is a type and a shadow again of what we now have in our new covenant, that constant forgiveness forgiveness, that being freely forgiven. Amen. And because we have been freely forgiven, we should also turn around and be able to freely forgive others. So that's the first type in shadow, that forgiveness that Jesus was saying. He was like saying, I do not say up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven, you know, in one day, 70 times seven, that's like 400 and something. I don't know, right off the top of my head, 490 times. Basically, we want to constantly walk in forgiveness and be freely forgiven others as we have freely been forgiven because that's what we now have under our new covenant, you know, under this covenant of grace that we're now walking in and operating in. Okay, so now let's go to the second part here. This starts in verse 23. It says, therefore, Jesus is saying, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like... Now, just on a side note, whenever you hear Jesus say, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like... Take note because Jesus is about to share something very valuable with you here that is going to be the key to you seeing the kingdom of heaven manifest in your life here on this earth. You know, uh, earlier this week, I had did a... Um, weekly meditation and it was on Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 that was saying seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and the point I was making in that scripture is that it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and what is the kingdom of God it is a government it is a set of laws spiritual laws that have been put in place and when we understand how to operate under those kingdom laws under those kingdom principles then that is then the word is telling us seek ye first the kingdom of God understand kingdom principle kingdom rule how things work in the kingdom and his righteousness understand the fact that you're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and when you understand these two things seek ye first the kingdom kingdom law kingdom rule kingdom principle and the fact that you're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus then everything else you need in life will be added unto you so here, when Jesus is saying, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, this is a, this is a clue. This is a key. He's saying, this is how the kingdom operates. Seek ye first the kingdom. So pay attention. Listen to what I'm saying, because here I'm telling you what the kingdom is like. Amen. So whenever you see that phrase, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, take note, because that's something we want to pay attention to. And we want, it's a principle that we want to apply in our daily lives. It's something we really want to study and understand because whatever Jesus says after that, it is vital. It is key in order for us to see the promises of God come to pass. So here in 23, Jesus is saying, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he had uh, begun to settle accounts. And then he, uh, and then one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, this is an important part to understand here, this 10,000 talents. Now, for years, I read this parable and I just kind of skipped over this 10,000 talents. Okay, that's a lot. You know, maybe like $10,000 or maybe $100,000 today. But no, let me explain to you what ten, how much 10,000 talents actually is, just so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Uh, one talent, and, and if you search this out, say this out, you know, in the Word, say this out online and stuff, you'll, you'll, you can come to this for yourself. But basically what I came up with is one talent is equal to 6,000 denarii, which would take an ordinary laborer 6,000 days or 16 years to earn. Okay? So one talent, one talent is equal to 6,000 denarii or six thousand days wages okay <laughs> that's a six thousand days you know would take the 
average laborer or 16 years to earn one talent, okay? And how do we come up with this? In Matthew chapter 20, verses one and two, which is the parable of the workers in the vineyard, and I'm not gonna go into that whole parable right now, but it's found in Matthew chapter 20, if you wanna read it through for yourself. Basically, uh, the owner of the vineyard was going out to hire people to work in the field, and the wage for that one day of work was one denarii. One talent is equal to 6,000 denarii which would take an ordinary laborer 6,000 days or 16 years to earn. This particular, this particular servant owed his master 10,000 talents, okay? 10,000 talents, okay? Which would equate to somewhere around 60 million denarii, okay? So if this man, his wife, and his children worked for this master every day, for the rest of their days, as long as they lived on the earth, they would not be able to repay 60 million denarii. So this is an insurmountable, uh, you know, number. I mean, this is something, like I said, this man, his wife, his children could work for every day for the rest of their lives and they still would not, but he could, they could work, they could sell everything they had and they still would not be able to pay this huge debt. They would not be able to pay this huge debt that was owed. And so the servant asked him, he's like, hey, please, you know, just, just give me a chance, you know, be patient with me and I will pay you. And then notice in 27, it says, then the master of the servant was moved with compassion and he released him and forgave him his debt. This is a type and a shadow of Jesus because how many times in the New Testament when we see Jesus out ministering to people, healing people, does it say, and he was moved with compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion. And Jesus himself said, if you see me, you see the Father. I don't do anything that the Father doesn't say do. I don't say anything that the Father doesn't tell me to say. Jesus said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. So if Jesus was moved with compassion, then that means God, our Heavenly Father, was moved with compassion. Amen. And so it says, the master of the servant, the king, was moved with compassion. He released the servant and forgave him his debt. This is exactly what we have today in our new covenant. Our heavenly father, he knew that mankind owed a debt, an insurmountable debt that we would never be able to pay. The wages of sin is death. God knew that no matter how good man wanted to be, how good man tried to be, man would never be able to fulfill the law completely because the law was perfect, but we were not and we would fall short, amen? And we were born into sin. I mean, we would fall short. God knew that no matter how much we wanted to, no matter how much we tried, no matter how hard we worked, we would never be able to, to fulfill the law completely. We would never be able to pay the debt that we owed. And so because of that, our Heavenly Father was moved with compassion and he sent Jesus here to the earth to die for us, amen? And when Jesus came here to the earth and he died for us, of course, we know all of our sins, past, present, and future were forgiven. And now in Christ, we have been made, again, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So this is how this is a type and a shadow of what we have today. The tremendous debt that we owed that we could never pay, but our Heavenly Father he had compassion on us and he released us and he chose to release us from that debt by sending his son Jesus here to the earth. Amen. And so now all we have to do is just receive that free gift that has been given to us. Amen. But let me go on here. In verse 28, it says, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? 
and his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Okay, and how is how does this apply to us today? Today, again, freely we have received, so freely freely we have received forgiveness. So again, freely we want to forgive others. We want to walk in forgiveness. We want to make forgiveness a way of life for us. Amen. That just wants to be that just needs to be part of who we are. We need to be open and and freely loving, forgiving people. Amen. But like I said, I mean you're a doormat. You guard your heart. But again, we want to walk in forgiveness. I can forgive you and not deal with you ever again in life. You know what I'm saying? So just, I'm saying, guard your heart. I'm not saying be a doormat, okay? But we want to operate in that forgiveness. And here, the uh, the master, he called this servant wicked when he would not, you know, the master is like, I forgave you this huge debt, but then you want to turn around and have your fellow servant thrown in jail, you know, for a, for a hundred denarii, you know, but I forgave you 60 million denarii and you couldn't even forgive him a hundred denarii. And so the king had him thrown in jail. The, the master had him thrown in jail. And how does this relate to us today? When we choose to walk in unforgiveness, we are literally imprisoning ourselves. Okay, because unforgiveness, it binds you up. Amen. Unforgiveness, it, it blocks the blessing. It blocks the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. And when you're walking around and you allow that seed of unforgiveness to take root in your heart, amen, that seed of bitterness to take root in your heart, it's going to start growing and it's going to start producing. And the things that it produce, the fruit that it produce, is not going to be good fruit. It's not going to be something that you want to see in your life. So when we we choose not to walk in unforgiveness. And I did a video where I was talking about the importance of forgiving and why we want to forgive. And I'll link that in the description below. But, um, you know, because I really don't want to, you know, make the video about that either. But the thing that we want to keep in mind is that we want to forgive because when we don't forgive, we literally imprison ourselves. We are binding ourselves up and we're blocking ourselves from receiving the blessing. We're blocking the Holy Spirit from being able to flow freely to us. We're blocking ourselves from being able to hear the voice of God. We're literally imprisoning ourselves and cheating ourselves. Amen. So we always want to walk in forgiveness. You know, it's good to forgive for that other person to release them, but it's also good to forgive for us because again, we want to be, be ye imitators of Christ. Okay. Jesus, he was hanging on the cross and his, the people who put him on the cross was there. And he said, father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We want to be imitators of Christ. So we want to make forgiveness a way of life for ourselves as well. Well, guys, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close for today. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please leave any comments or questions that you may have below and I'll get back to you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and continued blessings.